hello, hello, hello. Hello everyone on Facebook tonight. I know I'm late, I know I'm late. <laughs> but I've been traveling all day, uh, trying to get home. Our flights were delayed and then they were delayed and then they were delayed. <laughs> and so I've been, and I just walked in the door uh, 15 minutes ago. I was coming from the coast and uh, a long, long flight, long day. I uh, couldn't do this Facebook this morning. Um, uh, had to be out of the place we're staying in early, and uh, it's a long story. But anyway, we're here, and uh, somebody uh, somebody sent me a message. Let me know that you're seeing this. Uh, I know it's uh, nine o'clock uh, my time, and after 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 nine my time, I'm coming from the West Coast where it was just seven ten. But uh, I know it's ten after ten your time if you're in the East. And I apologize for the lateness of the hour. However, um, I promised last night in my post that I would somehow get this word in today. Okay, thank God. People are saying that they're, they're seeing me. You're hearing me all right. Hello from Connecticut. Uh, let's see who we got watching tonight. Okay, hello, Carol. Hello, Kara. Hello, Lynette. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Uh, not used to seeing you all at night. Uh, you know, usually I come in the day. Hello, Glenn. Uh, Dolores, hello to you. Uh, glad that you're seeing me. Uh, CG in uh, San Francisco. I just came from California. Uh, Cindy, God bless you from Virginia. Uh, Isaiah, all the way from Sydney, Australia. It's morning there tomorrow. Uh, hello. And uh, Kim, Kim Lee and Nora and Judy from Billings, Montana. Oh my goodness. I remember when I was a boy, my dad had a crusade in Billings, Montana. Oh, what a great day. And then uh, we went out after the crusade and had a one day crusade at the Crow Indian Reservation. And I remember that. I remember riding a horse that day. I was just a little boy, but I remember it. Then some years ago, I guess maybe maybe eight or ten years ago, I had a crusade on the Blackfoot Reservation up there in just outside of Billings. And we had one of the largest crowds they'd ever had. And many, many salvations, many miracles. And thank God for, for the Native American people. I have Native American blood in me. I have Choctaw and Cherokee in me through my, on my father's side. Uh, hello to all those of you that are, that are watching tonight. And if you're just joining me, I'm sorry uh, that I was not able to post this morning because of my travel. My travel plans got changed and it kind of got discombobulated. Have you ever just gotten discombobulated? Well, that's what happened to us. I knew it was going to happen last night because I knew the change was coming. And uh, we had to change flights and everything and, and, and get all that squared away. So I couldn't do it this morning. And then... then <laughs> We finally got our flight, but it was delayed because of weather in the Midwest. Big storm. And uh, so they held us for, I guess, an hour and a half or so. Hour, hour and a half. But anyway, we got on and we got home and took a while to get our bags. and took a while to get back to the house, but here we are. So we're home and it's uh, it's about uh, 9.15 here, at 10.15 in the east. And the lest I forget, uh, Lindsay will be doing her Facebook post tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly what time. Uh, we have a we have a staff meeting tomorrow, and so we, you may uh, you ought to turn on your notifications on uh, the Make Your Day Count site or on our site. We'll do it, do it that way here as well, and uh, be sure that you don't miss her Thursday for Lin Lindsay's Thursday Pray Day. Uh, praise God! By the way, while we were out of town, uh, Lindsay preached at the World Harvest Church in Marietta uh, this past week, and so did I. Uh, great great services there in in Murrieta, that's about halfway between San Diego and Los Angeles in the Temecula Valley, beautiful area of, uh, of the country. And then we also did a live uh, television program around the world on the Love, uh, the Love Network. I'm, I may not be saying that right, uh, with Pastor Chris and with Benny Hinn. We were on the air uh, live the other night for two hours around the world. We were all over the United States. We were in the United Kingdom. We were in South Africa. We were in Nigeria, Central Africa, and other places in the world. Some of you may have seen it. I think it's the, the Live World. I think it's called Live World Network. And uh, I'd never been on that network before. Uh, but we were live for two hours. And uh, 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 Robia, uh, Robia Scott, who was one of the stars of the movie Unplanned, uh, was one of the guests. She's a spirit-filled Christian. Now, she plays the villain. If you've seen Unplanned, you know what I'm talking about. She plays the villain. And she said, Richard, when you, you and Lindsay, when you see the movie, you're going to hate me. <laughs> well, let me tell you what, she plays a good villain, but she is a spirit-filled, on-fire God pastor. And uh, we met her 
I've not had an opportunity to see the film yet, but I'm going to. Film's doing very well around the world. Well, actually in the United States, getting ready to be released in Canada, and then it goes in other nations uh, next. Uh, they're, they were on the air talking about it that night live. So I got to be with, with her and with her publicist. And then also, uh, Lindsay and I were with, uh, 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 were of course, with Benny Hinn. And then there were several others that were on the program. And uh, we thank God for that. Uh, James Payne was there. And uh, James has been a longtime friend. And James preached a sermon that night. It was just outstanding. And he, he, he's a songwriter. He's written a number of songs for me. But my favorite song is his own personal testimony. Uh, the night Jack Daniels met John 3.16. <laughs> it's a story of an old alcoholic who gave his heart to the Lord. The night Jack Daniels met John 3.16. <laughs> anyway... Uh, we had a, had a wonderful time and a good time with James. Um, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes tonight about the day the earth stood still. You say, well, Richard, that's a scientific impossibility. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not impossible, for there's nothing too hard for God. Now, speaking of that, if you have a prayer request, why don't you send it to me right now? Because I'm going to be laying my hands on every prayer request that comes in. So why don't you get your prayer request in to me right now. You may have a situation in your life that just doesn't look like it's possible. But God is the God of the impossible. He can take that which seems impossible and turn it around for your good, for my good, for our good. The day the earth stood still. Is it possible, Richard, that, that the earth could stand still? Well, let me read to you. Excuse me for putting on my glasses. Uh, let me read to you from Joshua chapter 10. Then the Lord spoke. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still. Moon in the valley, stand still. Verse 13 and the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before or after that the Lord hearkened or listened to the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. This is a very, very powerful, powerful passage of the Bible. It's the day that the earth stood still. Uh, you may need that kind of miracle in your life uh, with what you're facing. Let's take a look at this because this is an extraordinary day. It's the day the earth stood still. Back in the 1950s, they made a, a movie called uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Some of you may have seen it. It was one of my favorites. It's a science fiction, I, I understand, in the movie. Not in real life with God, but in the movie, it was science fiction. It's the story of an alien who comes to the United States to try to warn America and the world that, that the, the kind of weapons that they were, uh, that they were creating uh, were going to take America to a higher level of war, which would cause other other planets to, to besiege America. And I, I realize it was a far-fetched thing, but they had some great actors. Patricia Neal was in it, and uh, Sir Michael Rennie was in it, great uh, uh, actor from, from Britain. And um, uh, it, it, is a, it is quite a, quite an interesting story. And the, the old professor was played uh, by Sam Jaffe. Of course, Sam Jaffe was in uh, uh, Ben-Hur, uh, you remember the old movie Ben-Hur? He played the steward of Judah Ben-Hur, who was also played by Charlton Heston. And I love those old uh, old Bible movies like that, historical movies. Well, anyway, Sam Jaffe played the professor. And the the alien, Michael Rennie, Sir Michael Rennie, uh, convinced him that he needed to get a message to all the world leaders, but the world leaders wouldn't listen to him. And so he said... Uh, is it possible, this is Sam Jaffe talking, the professor, is it possible for you to do something that doesn't hurt anybody, yet gets the world's attention? And Michael Reddy said, yes, I can take care of it. So he caused the world to stop. Everything stopped for a period of time, except for airplanes that were in the air and surgeries that were underway and things of that nature. 
So no one was injured, but it got everybody's attention and caused all the world leaders to come together. Well, that's, that's a story. That's not what happened here. What happened that there was in a movie. But this is something that's very real that happened in that part of the world thousands of years ago through Joshua. And there, there are three things. There, there are three things that are very, very important, important principles that I want to share. First of all, I want to share about God's concern for his people. My friend, God knows who you are. He knows where you live. He knows what you're going through right now. I mean, he knows your address. He knows your zip code. He knows right where you are and right what you're going through right now. He has a concern for you. God has a concern over his people. And if you go back into this story, you'll find that Joshua and the children of Israel had been tricked by the Gibeonites. Now, when Joshua led the children of Israel across the Jordan River into occupied territory, there were squatters on the land, and God had instructed him to remove the squatters because the land, which you know today as Israel, was given to God's people, the Jews. And Joshua led his armies in, and one of the first things they did was they took on the battle of Jericho and won, and they took on the battle of Ai, and they won. And the Gibeonites heard they were coming, and so they tricked them. They sent emissaries to cut a deal with them, to be their slaves. And um, Joshua was fooled. He was fooled by these Gibeonites. Uh, but nevertheless, the five armies of the Amorites decided that since Gibeon had turned traitor on them, that they would go ahead and sack the city of Gibeon and, and, and destroy it and take the people with them. Well, the Gibeonites heard that the five armies were coming and they sent an urgent message to Joshua, come, come and help us, please. We're, we're, we're with you. We're, we're on your side. Please come and help us. So Joshua marched his troops all night long. Now you'd have thought the next morning they at least need a few hours of sleep, but instead they went right to battle. And all of a sudden Joshua and his army began winning, but the sun was beginning to set. And Joshua knew that in order complete, to complete the victory that God had, he needed more daylight. And so he lifted his hands and he said, Son, stand still. And God honored the prayer of Joshua. And he stopped the earth from rotating around the sun for almost a whole day, the Bible says so that they had enough daylight to complete the victory and all five of the kings and their armies were destroyed because of a word from God. And it shows, it shows God's concern. God wanted Joshua and the people of Israel to finish the battle. Well, I want you to know that God wants you to finish your victory. He wants you to finish your course with joy. He wants you to finish your life with joy. He wants you to prosper in every area of your life, from the crown of your head even unto the soles of your feet. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God has a concern for you. He, he knows what's going on in your life. He knows where you need healing. He knows where you need this, where you need that. He knows, and he has a concern for you. Don't be thinking for a moment that God is only involved in international affairs. That would be the biggest mistake you could make. God is concerned about you right now where you are. He was concerned about Joshua and the children of Israel winning that battle. And when Joshua put up his hands and said, son, stand still, God honored his prayer. And I want you to know that God will honor prayer today because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God has a concern over his people. Uh, Mark eleven twenty three and 24 says, whosoever shall say, unto this mountain. Now notice Joshua spoke it. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, this problem, this need, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, listen to those words, believe, but that if you'll believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. And he continued in verse 24, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Well, when do you believe? When you pray. When you pray, believe. 
I've talked about that before on this Facebook uh, video, on these Facebook videos. When you pray, believe. Right in the middle of your prayer, that's the time to believe. Joshua believed that when he said, son, stand still, that God would honor his prayer. That's why what you say is so critically important. So stop negating yourself. Stop putting yourself down. Stop trying to figure everything out. Instead, begin to speak with your mouth the things of God and believe that whatsoever you say shall come to pass. There are some things in my life right now. Lindsay and I were on the plane today. We're talking about things that we're believing God for. We just called him in in the name of Jesus. We didn't whine about it. We didn't gripe about it. We didn't complain about it because we have things coming to us. We've got seed in the ground. And God has to honor his seed. So we are calling that which is not as though it is. Well, that's what Joshua did. He called that which was not as though it was. Now, the second thing I want you to notice here is God's control over his creation. Think about it. Actually, the sun stood still. Scientists cannot figure it out. And scientists will tell you that there is a missing gap in time from some thousands of years ago. They can't figure it out. They don't understand how there's a missing gap. Well, all they need to do is read Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14, and they'll find exactly where the missing gap came from. It came from the voice of Joshua and the hand of God. And God has uh, control over his creation. You say, well, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like God has control. Look at all the mess that's going on. You look at all this, this happening. Look at all the, look at all the bombings. Look what happened. Uh, look what happened in, in New Zealand. Look what happened the other day in Sri Lanka. Uh, we know pastors there. We call to check on them and see that they, that they and their churches are all right. Look what, look what's happening in our own country. Look at the, at the terrorists. Look, look, look what the agenda is of the terrorists. Those who, who would, who would seek to destroy everything that, that America stands for. And it looks like politically, well, <laughs> I won't get into politics. I'm not a politician, but my goodness, have you ever seen anything like it in your life? I mean, have you ever seen such hatred? <laughs> Maybe that's why Jesus told the disciples to go to the upper room and come together, come into unity. <laughs> Well, maybe our political leaders need to go to an upper room and stay there until they come into unity. They might be there a while before that happened. Well, maybe the disciples were there for a while. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. I just know the Holy Spirit was not poured out until they came together. You want a revival in America? You want, you want people called out on God? Then get together. Stop worried about how I cross my I or how I dot my, uh, cross my, uh, dot my I, I should say, or cross my T, you know. You may not agree with everything that I say. I may not agree with everything that you say, but, but we believe in Jesus, okay? Stop worrying about the 10 or 15% you can't handle and take the 80 to 85% that you can. My dad would say, eat the straw and spit out the sticks. <laughs> God has not fallen off the throne. If I could get a message to the Democrats and the Republicans, I would say, brothers, sisters, stop your fighting. Put down your, your weapons of words and come together. Find some common ground. And I'd also say, uh, you, you uh, political leaders, go to the media and tell them to stop it. Because it's the media that stirs up so much stuff and, and changes it around. That's what I do. Now, I'm not a politician. You don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I'm not about to get into politics, you know. No, I'm not going to do that. But I know, I know what needs to happen. Well, I know the world's in a mess. But God didn't do it. And there are people who are blaming God for all this that's going on. It's not God's doing. It's man's doing. But we can come together. I'm telling you. We can come together. God is still on his throne. He's in control of his universe. And the third thing I want you to see is God's consent to answered prayer. The miracle took place because Joshua spoke. He prayed. He said, son, stand still. Now that was a prayer. That was a prayer. Prayer did it, friend prayer. When Peter was imprisoned, the disciples gathered around that jail and prayed. And an angel came and tapped Peter on the shoulder and released him from jail. 
When Paul was struck and they thought he was dead and left him on the highway, the people gathered around and prayed. And Paul rose up and went on to the next place for ministry. God has not fallen off the throne. God's consent to answered prayer. Prayer, my dad used to say, is the key that unlocks the throne of God's mercy. Praise God for prayer. I believe in prayer. I was uh, reading online today, sitting in the airport waiting uh, for <laughs> all the delays, and uh, there was a, a very well-known actress. She's Australian, and she was talking about how people were joking with her and kidding with her because of her faith in God and how she's raising her children. If I said her name, you'd know it. It's all over the news today. And she said, uh, I believe in God and I'm not ashamed of it. She said, I grew up with a praying grandmother. We prayed in our home. And she said, I'm still praying today and I'm teaching my children to pray. And they go to church. The Bible says, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. Prayer changes things, friend. Prayer changes things. Prayer is the sincere desire of man's heart. Prayer is not some big 50 cent word. Prayer is just talking to God out of your heart and telling God how you feel. And when you talk to him like that, believe me, he'll answer you. I know, I know he will. I believe it with all of my heart. You know, I'd like to have been there that day. I'd like to have been standing there that day watching as Joshua lifted his hands and said, Son, stand still. It was the day the earth stood still. The sun stopped, and Joshua and his army was able to defeat the five armies and win the day, not only for the Gibeonites, whose, uh, uh, whose area was, was saved, but also for the Hebrews. And God who did that, is the same God who's concerned about you. Let me say it again. He knows who you are. He knows where you live. He knows what you're going through. He has not gone out of the miracle business. And I pray right now in the authority of the name of Jesus for God Almighty, whom I serve with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength to touch you tonight and to heal you tonight and to deliver you tonight. And I set my faith with you. I come against every sickness and every disease, every fear, every doubt, every worry, every anxious moment, every depressed feeling, a lonely feeling, any feeling of suicide. I bind that in the name of Jesus. I pray over you for healing tonight. And my friend, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm standing with you in faith. I'm saying healing come forth in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that as you continue to sow your seed unto God, yes, your seed unto God. I'm a seed sower and I'm proud of it. As you continue to sow your seed to God, that God Almighty will keep his word and honor you and give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, just like Jesus said in Luke 6:38. I pray over your marriage, over your business, over your job, over your ministry. Pray over your, your family, over your children, your, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. I, I pray for God's blessing. I pray over you for the blessing of Abraham, the mind of Christ, the spirit of David, the wisdom of Solomon, the peace of God that passes all understanding, and the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. I pray this tonight in faith, believing, expecting, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm so glad I was able to do this post. I didn't know if I was going to, with the delays, I wasn't sure what time I was going to get home tonight. <laughs> but thank God we got home. And uh, we're home now. And uh, Lindsay will be doing her Thursday pray day tomorrow morning. Now, I'm not exactly sure what time. We've got a big staff meeting tomorrow. So turn on your notifications. And if you don't know how to turn them on, ask your kids. <laughs> That's what I do when I <laughs> ask them. They know. <laughs> My kids make fun of me uh, because sometimes I'm not too hot on handling uh, my mobile phone. But they know. 
uh, have someone show you how to turn on your notifications so you're notified when Lindsay's coming on. I don't know what time it'll be, sometime in the morning. Anyway, uh, I'm coming to Georgetown, Texas uh, on Sunday. I'm preaching on Sunday. I'm preaching Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in Georgetown, Texas. Now, that's just south of, uh, of uh, Austin. So if you're in that area, I'm looking forward to seeing you. By, by the way, all the information, the times and the location, the address is all on our website. Just go to oralroberts.com and you'll find out everything. Thank you for every seed that you sow. When you support this ministry, you're saying, yes, I want to help Richard Roberts to spread the saving, healing, delivering ministry of Jesus all over the world. Thank you for every gift. This would be a good week for you to sow a seed gift unto the Lord through this ministry. Thank you for doing it. God richly bless you. If you need special prayer online, oralroberts.com slash prayer. All those prayer requests are brought to me every day, no matter where I am in the world. Oralroberts.com slash prayer. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'll be laying hands on all these prayer requests. And if you, if uh, you, of course, you can watch this video again, or you can share it with your family and friends. Share this family, this video with your family and friends. And if someone you know doesn't have Facebook, tell them about it so they can get Facebook and, and, uh, and watch every Wednesday. Praise God. God bless each one of you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.